Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. There's a lot of diversity within the snake hobby. Today, we're gonna look at some of the extreme opposites. You're watching Snake Bites. When you're working with a diverse collection of reptiles like we do, you certainly work with animals that are kind of on the opposite ends of the spectrum. Take for instance, big snakes, like this tiger reticulated python. You know, these guys are really big animals and obviously when you're working with something that's this size, you've gotta really pay it attention differently than a smaller snake. Obviously these huge snakes can really give you some problems when it comes to their attitude. And again, getting bit by something like this is a lot different than getting bit by a corn snake. And as you can see, she's a really cool animal, but she's agitated right now. So when you're working with big snakes like this, it's really important to pay attention and make sure you always know what's going on. Ooh, she's getting mad. <laughs> oh, like I said, you gotta be really careful because you never know what's gonna happen. She's normally a really nice animal, but I think just messing with her in her cage got her a little bit pissed off. And I kind of think sometimes, why do snakes get so big and other snakes stay small? I really think because where they're from, they're kind of one of the apex predators and there's a lot of prey for them to eat. Now on the other hand, this male albino African house snake is only about 18 inches long and it's as big as it's ever gonna get. Certainly caring for something this size is a lot different than caring for a big snake. Now I tell you what, these guys, you gotta be more concerned about them getting away or even escaping more than you have to do about bodily harm to yourself. But they're really cool animals. And again, I think that the small size has to do with where they're from and the predator to prey ratio and what they have to actually eat. But you know what? I'm really not a biologist, so I'd like to know what you guys think. And if you have a better theory than that, go ahead and comment down below. So Brian's showing you guys a lot of opposites in the snake world today and it got me thinking about other things that don't really go together. Now the guys always give me a lot of crap because I put Cheerios in my yogurt at lunch and I think it's delicious. But I think things like putting ketchup on eggs is gross. So I want to know what weird combinations you guys like together. It doesn't have to be food, but what's weird that you like that other people think is kind of weird? Leave us a comment below and let us know what you think. Another extreme example of diversity within the snake hobby is the expense of a snake. Now some ball pythons and other snakes can be worth tens of thousands of dollars. Take for instance this pastel soul sucker, enchi queen bee, and lavender albino spider. These animals combined are probably worth about $60,000. That's a lot of money for a type of snake. But the most important thing is to treat them like they're normal ball pythons. It doesn't really matter what they cost. They need the same requirements, whether they're a $10 snake or a $50,000 dollar snake. I see a lot of keepers make that mistake. They start to keep an animal that's worth a lot of money differently than a normal snake and that's just a recipe for disaster. When you have a lot of snakes, one of the things you have to deal with is temperament. Some snakes are mean, some snakes are tame, some species are kind of known to be mean, and some species are known to be tame. But the truth is, is that there's animals within each species that seem to be temperamental and some that seem to be really docile. Like for instance, king rat snakes, we show them a lot in the show as being aggressive, but the truth is there's some of them that are really docile. Take for instance this animal here, I happen to know that it's just a really temperamental animal and you just never know what it's gonna do. You can see it's acting pretty good now, but mark my words, if I keep this thing out for more than a few minutes, it's gonna come after my face. It's just a really cantankerous animal. And again, one of those things that you have to handle with extreme care. But again, not all king rats are like that. It looks like I'm gonna get away from this handling without getting bit. Oh, I shouldn't have said that so quick. This is usually when it gets dicey. If I can get it in its cage, I'm in good shape, and I did. Now this animal, on the other hand, is typically really docile. You know, it's a little bit fast, but again, it's really tame as far as handling goes. My point is, is that when you're dealing with a lot of animals, you're gonna deal with individuals that are mean and you're gonna deal with individuals that are really tame. These Amazon tree boas are a perfect example of opposites in nature. The polymorphism within one clutch or litter is amazing. Believe it or not, these are siblings. This is what they call a garden phase and then of course there's a yellow tiger type phase. And uh, it's amazing that the same 
litter of babies can yield such extreme differences in pattern and color. And I think that's because these animals are gonna end up growing up in different areas. Obviously a yellow animal like this is probably gonna be in a tree that has yellowing flowers, whereas something like this is gonna be more in the foliage. Still in the trees though, it's just a way that they can have diversity and ways to catch prey. Again, it's just amazing the way nature works. Now the last thing I want to talk about that is extreme opposites in snakes is live bearing snakes as opposed to egg bearing snakes. And that's something that you have to consider if you ever want to start breeding snakes. Do you want to take care of eggs and have to have an incubator or do you want animals that are just going to have live young? There's really two camps to think about there. When it comes to boa constrictors like this hypo boa, she's going to have live babies. Garter snakes also do it and pretty much all tree boas and sand boas all have live babies. It is really cool to breed an animal and just open up a cage and bam there's a whole bunch of babies but there's some downsides to it too there's a lot more stillborn animals with live bears which really rips your heart out now when it comes to ball pythons and in, in cl most colubrids you've got egg laying snakes which I personally prefer. I seem to do better with egg laying and I like the fact that it only takes about 50 days from being gravid to when you actually have eggs on the ground. Then you can look at some eggs in an incubator just like this clutch here and it's kind of cool to be able to feel like you have some control over what's going to hatch as far as the egg itself, certainly not the morph. But live bearers on the other hand will hang on to their babies internally for 115 days or more depending on the species. That's an awful long time to be hanging on waiting for babies. But again, when you look at all the snakes and the differences you've got to look at lots of different things again big snakes small snakes mean snakes tame snakes live bearers egg layers and even light and dark snakes there's all kinds of choices and I'm sure if you decide to work with snakes you're gonna find the right choice for you hey George I got no time for your bibble bubble bullshit today Sam we gotta hide oh my god I forgot forgot what it's opposite day. You know, like when we were kids, we say the opposite of what we mean. Yeah, and it was stupid. No, Glenn Scaligety loves it. So? So that means we avoid Brian and lay low. You guys are stupid. I'm just gonna work. No, you better make yourself scarce if you want to keep your job. George? George, you in here? George, where are you at? Hey Sam, I can't find George anywhere. Can you do me a favor and feed the carpets and water the Brazilians? Yes, I can feed the Brazilians and water the carpets. No, feed the carpets, water the Brazilians. No, no, I got it. Opposite day. What are you talking about? Nothing. Is there something wrong? Yes, there's something wrong. You know, just do what you're doing. Just, I'll figure something else out. No can do. Only two more hours to go. Don't get too excited, that's a long time. Hey, Julie, George, you guys in here? Ooh. Ooh. Sam, can you do me a favor and help me find George and Chewy? They clocked in this morning, but I haven't seen them all day. Have you seen them? I haven't seen them. Why'd you ask it like a question? Because I'm not confused about opposite day? Oh, it's not opposite day. It's not? No. So it is opposite day? No, it means it's not opposite day. But by the rules of opposite day, if you say it's not opposite day, then it is opposite day. Okay then, it's opposite day. Can you help me find Chewy and George now? Wait, so it is opposite day? No, no it's not opposite day. Aha, so it really is opposite day. It's not opposite day. Is this kid over already? No. For this week's comment of the week, the question was, how early is too early for Christmas? And Rob690 said, I usually start listening to Christmas music and getting presents in July or August. If I could live somewhere where it snowed all year and had Christmas songs and Christmas lights all the time, I would. North Pole, here I come. I tell you what, Christmas songs in July and August, I could actually see Lori doing that. And as for snow all year, you're crazy. Hey guys, there's a lot of really exciting projects going on here at BHB and Snake Bites. 
including some pretty cool TV news coming. To follow me on all those updates, make sure to hit me up on Twitter and Facebook at Snake Bites TV. Until next time, this has been Snake Bites. <laughs>